Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting a line and wash painting using fine liners, a sharpie and a limited palette. I'm going to be being inspired by this photograph which I found on Pixabay. The link is in the description below. This photograph I think is very suitable for painting for anybody from beginners right the way through to intermediates and more advanced um, artists because you can take exactly what you want from the photograph as much as you need. You can simplify it right down just to a couple of buildings and a few trees. Um, and Or you could take it and add just about every detail that you can see in the photograph and slowly build it up using your ink pens to being quite a complex and interesting scene. So don't be put off if you're a beginner. You can simplify quite easily as I'm doing here with my initial pencil sketch. I'm just putting in the really basic um, shapes that I want which is going to be the church with its lovely steeple or spire that's going to be my focal point and I want a few other simple buildings that are going to be no more than just parallelograms for the roofs and small gable ends and then just some scribbly trees and bushes and that's going to be about it really just the very faint mountains in the background so to start with I'm pulling out those basic shapes and getting them right. If you don't get them right, then just use an eraser and reshape the object, the house or the tree until you like it, until it sort of suits the drawing. Um, because I think it's important, even though it's simple, to get the drawing right first before you go in with ink. Now I'm using my favourite Faber-Castell fine liners they're they're pit artist pens and they're filled with permanent um so water resistant indian ink and they work beautifully with watercolor paint so i'm going over my pencil lines and this is why it was important to make sure you're happy with your pencil sketch because then it's very easy just to go over the pencil marks and just enhance them with extra shadows and you can see here I've moved on to my Sharpie and it's got a nice big nib. Again, it's a permanent waterproof marker um, and I'm very easily able to go over the pencil lines for my trees with this thick nib and it's creating my trunks and main branches very quickly. Again, um, if your drawing is right, then your ink work will be right too. With line and wash, it's a little bit different from painting with pure watercolour um, because obviously you're putting in an outline or line work to start with. And um, so basically you're working in just three tones. The main tones are, there's the, the lightest light, um, the mid-tones and the darkest darks. The lightest light is going to be any of the white of the paper that you leave unpainted or very lightly washed over. The darkest darks are all going to be provided by the ink. So the outline and any of the shadows that we put in that you can see I'm beginning to put in now at the base of my trees and my bushes and for my buildings, those shadows are straight away creating our darkest darks. Normally with watercolour painting, you work from light through to dark. This way you're working opposite to that really. You're um, creating your darks first with your line work and your shadows. Um, and then you're putting in all your mid-tones with the paint very simply being led by the line drawing and anything that you carefully leave or spare out from the paint, um, for example, any areas that you want to be bright white snow, they'll be your lightest lights. Don't be afraid to go too dark for a simple line drawing like this. It can be very effective. Um, 
but if you decide that you want um, a much more detailed and accurate rendering of the photograph, then you could maybe add a bit more nuance and detail to the dark areas that I'm just blocking in here, um, which you can see on the photograph. And especially if you have a look at the photograph actually on Pixabay and download a nice large copy, you'll be able to see lots and lots of detail but if you just want a nice simple idea for a Christmas card, um, then just keep it simple like this. And you can see that I've now changed back to my small fine liner. I think it's a 0.5 nib or F for fine. And I'm putting in the fine branches and twigs at the ends of the larger branches that I drew with the Sharpie. Just a few dots and dashes across the snow, maybe to indicate a little bit of something or nothing. Maybe some footsteps in the snow, some just slight flaws there. Nothing too much. Now I'm just going to dot in my distant, or well, mid tree line, the tree line that's in the photograph, just below the foot of the mountains. Hopefully I'll be able to get the tree, all those trees in with paint. If not, um, I'm going to, I'll come back and add a bit of shading with ink pen at the end of the painting, but I'm going to see if I can do enough just with some paint. And then dotting and dashing in the line for the distant mountains, I really want those to be very, very faint. So it's just a slight hint of where they'll be. And I think that's just about finished now, the line work. So I'm just going to let it sit for about half an hour, just in case there's any bits that are slightly wet, because um, if the ink doesn't completely dry, and even though it's a fine liner, it dries very quickly, if it doesn't dry totally, then it might smudge a bit. So I've come back after a nice cup of coffee, and now let's paint this snow scene. I'm going to mix up a limited palette um, grey from Payne's Grey, Indigo and Prussian Blue that's already on my palette. So I'm just going to mix it together, quite a lot of it, but quite a weak watery mixture so I get a nice neutral grey. And using my medium Pro Art Harky brush, I'm going to stroke it in horizontal brush strokes Reloading again the brush, put a bit more paint on it. You can see it's very weak. Now this has gone straight onto the dry page. I'm not painting this wet in wet, but I'm creating this wet environment now with this graduated wash. I'm bringing it down across the mountains and over the um, mid tree line, mid distant tree line, and then adding a little bit more pigment. So a richer mixture, less water, dotting in a darker mix across that tree line, but I'm cutting carefully around my rooftops. I want to keep my rooftops um, white for snow, or at least much, much paler. I might put up a little pale blue wash at some point, but at the moment I'm cutting around the roofs and the spire carefully, um, well, the unpainted part of the spire. Um, I haven't been able to do this, this perfectly with a harky brush, so then I'll very quickly grab my fine calligraphy brush and pull some paint uh, from the wash close around the cottages and the roofs and the church, that sort of thing. So I've got that nice darker background. And then back in with a little bit more grey while it's still nice and wet, slightly darker. And my board is at an angle of about 45 degrees as normal. And so now that I'm painting wet in wet by dropping wet paint into the already damp page, um, it's kind of running down and giving me, giving me a much darker um, tone across the ground line. Um, I can mop that up if I need to, and then I can use my brush to pull across some br dry brush, leaving lots of unpainted paper for the snow. The dry brush will, will end up looking like shadows. So I'm pulling that across, trying to 
show the lie of the land, but very, very simply. And then if I put a bit too much paint on quickly before it dries, use a tissue and just wipe it off softly and shape those snow shadows a bit more. And I'll just let that dry off a bit um, so that when I come to do the cottages, I don't get any sort of runs into that blue. So that background has dried quite nicely. It's quite subtle, which is what I was looking for. So I'm going to now mix up on my three quarter inch flat brush, um, a little bit of um, raw sienna, very watery, very pale. I'm going to drop it into the sides of the buildings, keeping things nice and simple, just warming those buildings up a little bit against the skyline. If you want to keep your painting just the one colour, just sort of grey and blue, then by all means do so. It would still look just as effective, but I think I just want to warm this up a bit. kind of just adds a little bit extra to it, I think. And I think because the church and the spire is my focal point, I'm going to warm that up even more with a little bit of burnt sienna. And I shall drop that lightly into the stonework area of the church. And you can see straight away that... Um, draws the eye straight to the church now that we've got that slightly brighter colour on it. And while I've got some burnt sienna on my brush, I'm going to drop a little bit of um, burnt sienna into um, the bushes and the trees here and there, just to warm them up very slightly and to add a bit of dimension to the painting. If you're interested in a full length tutorial for this um, in two parts, um, with the line drawing um, in pencil and the ink line drawing to download as reference, um, please take a look at my Patreon page where you can see the full tutorial for this and for hundreds of other um, different paintings, um, exclusive Patreon uh, tutorials and paintings, along with most of my YouTube demos, which you can watch on Patreon advert free. I'm now finishing off the painting. Um, I just mixed up with my small squirrel mop a very watery mix of that greyish bluish colour from Payne's Grey, Indigo and Prussian Blue and I'm just touching it into my mountains here and there. It's very watery, there's hardly any pigment in it whatsoever. It just gives us that little hint of those um, distant mountains receding off into the distance. I can use a clean damp brush to soften off underneath those marks and I can lift out a bit um, with tissue just to give that sort of misty distant snowy mountain look. Now it's finishing touches. I think I want to emphasize the shadow on the right side of the church spire a bit more. So I've, I've used my Sharpie and I've just gone in and put in just shaping things a little bit more, making it a bit squarer before the spire rises out of the brickwork or stonework. And then just, I think I need to go over the windows, um, little row, vertical row of windows in the spire, making them slightly more obvious. Now it's possibly finished and here you can see I've removed the tape because that gives me a fresh look at it with a clean white border. I can decide whether I want to do anything to that 
a mid-ground tree level and I've decided that the paint didn't quite give me enough um, or I didn't put enough in there so I'm going to put in a few more faint trees behind the buildings but mostly what I'm going to do is build up with my fine liner um, some sort of rough and ready cross hatching behind the trees and the buildings just to build up that that middle ground behind the village. That needs to be a little bit darker and that in turn will give more distance to the mountains, but it will make the focal line of buildings and trees pop a lot more and also it'll help the snow in the foreground to seem lighter and brighter. You can see I'm being careful to go around the buildings, the roofs rather, um, just hatching and cross hatching unevenly so that I still get the kind of look of sort of um, clumps and groups of, of trees and things in the distance. Uh, but I think I'm much happier with that. If you want to do this before you paint, at the line work stage then please feel free to do that you might may find it easier to complete that section first i wasn't sure whether i was going to need it and my sort of method of working is very often if i'm not sure about something i won't do it um, just in case i don't need to if you see what i mean sort of going with this less is more kind of philosophy but here I think this really adds so much more dimension to the painting. I'm really pleased that I decided to go for it. So it's finished now and I hope that was helpful. I hope you can see how easy it is or would be even for beginners to tackle this kind of um, line and wash painting um, just by keeping it very very simple as you can see there's no complex drawing here but it's just some careful thinking about simplifying into the most basic of shapes and lines and then um, also thinking in terms of the three main tones your lightest lights with the unpainted paper um, darkest darks with the ink work and then letting the paint do all of the mid-tones. Well, thanks so much for watching. Please give us a thumbs up and um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.